This is a clip from David Finch's Gone Girl. Now this is a clip from Fight Club, which is also by David Fincher, and you can probably notice a few distinct differences visually between these two films. Now Gone Girl is the story of a fairly well-to-do American man dealing with the sudden, unsettling disappearance of his perfect, beautiful wife. The film is shot like this, creating a strange marriage between comfort and wealth with sterility and the nature of precision. This is because the story of the film revolves around two characters, one who enjoys comfort and indulgence and one who is clean and cold and precise. It's meant to make the later twists seem like unexpected, extreme disruptions of all of this perfect, empty framing. You know, we learn to, we, we construct a facade of ourselves. We construct an image for people to present the best version of ourselves. And then we go out into the world as adults and we seduce people with, with this projection of ourselves. And often <laughs> completely oblivious to the fact that the other person is doing that too. And there comes a point in three to five years into a relationship where one or more of the people who's entered into this contract says, I can't keep it up. I can't, I'm, I'm not interested in, in being the man of your dreams or the woman of your dreams anymore. I, I, I don't know what to tell you. And um, this movie was about the resentment that that might engender. Fight Club, however, is a gunky psychological story about a lonely, mentally unstable office worker embracing his violent animalistic urges and fighting materialism. It's shot and coloured like a grunge, punk, exaggerated music video meant to feel urban and confronting. It gets in your face because the turns of the story are about the wildness of the characters, the disregard of comfort, and the embrace of the untended. But it's also sharply satirical, promoting a kind of perverse voyeurism on behalf of people who take all of this ridiculousness that little bit too seriously. I storyboarded the whole movie. I could take them through the entire thing and say, here's where we're gonna feel a little weird. And this is gonna be a little sickening, and this is a <laughs> tiny bit misogynist. And you know, we'd walked them through it and they were, okay, okay, we're ready to take some risks. When we cut the movie together and we showed them the final thing is the first time I think that everybody realized that they were going to get fired. <laughs> <laughs> Both of these films can be classified, if you'd like to use the term, as cinematic. And in recent years I've seen an uptick in how commonly this word is used. But it's no longer confined to describing film, as it were. I've seen this term used to describe things such as the mere inclusion of colour correction, all the way to how a video thumbnail looks, and in a more broad sense to describe things like online video production and video games. This term, cinematic, seems to evoke the idea of modern cinematography, of a deliberate style seen anywhere from in the work of David Venture to to a Casey Neistat vlog to what seems to be an entire subgenre of gaming. Cinematic seems to ooze the atmosphere of seriousness and a sense of legitimacy to the art held within. But what does it really mean? The definition of the term cinematic is having qualities characteristic of film. Which I suppose is simple enough, a thing is cinematic if it's like a film, no? So let's do a little experiment. This is my face. I'm standing and I'm waving now and I'm just going to stare at you intently for a minute or two. Now would you describe this shot of regular old me as cinematic? Probably not, right? Or what if I did this to the image? What about this? What if I add black bars to the top, to the side, get a bit of grain in there, is this cinematic? What about this shot? The first problem is that of all these different shots, you could find a film that uses something like each one of them. Each single one of these different styles of this shot have different qualities characteristic of film. But this is not cinema, this is me staring at a camera. This is not cinematic, this is style. The difference is whether you see the audiovisual part of the film as all that the film's about. And I think we can all agree, that's not what movies are for. When David Fincher speaks of his movies and what they're about, he's focused on what they represent and how they'll make somebody feel by looking the way that they do. He uses his own personal experiences, like his divorce, to fuel his storytelling and does so, so he can tell those stories as best as he can, to the point where people might lose their jobs because he's so committed to a vision. There are reasons why Fincher chose two styles so different from each other, and it's because these stories are nothing alike. 
The term cinematic may be applicable to both, but it describes neither. These films could be shot by an entirely different director who interpreted these stories differently, they are both from books after all, and if they were telling these stories adequately and consistently, it would still be cinematic like the visual difference between the two great Gatsby films. The term means almost nothing because it means almost everything. But similar to how an author spells their words, the process and the look is not where the artistry truly lies. It's in the order and the pacing and what the words represent when they come together to make a picture. The term cinematic doesn't say much about the image or the emotional intention of these shots. The same applies to the visual style of any motion picture you've seen released in a theater since the year dot. They're not trying to look like a movie, they're trying to make you feel something. Trying to somehow synchronize the visual aspects of the project with the core of the project to help tell the story, to help create the world of the film. There are tried and true stylistic methods of doing this. Certain people who have years of experience, you can figure out how people respond to certain images. You can examine the use of character portraits, close-ups, look at how a movie uses it effectively, and how Thor doesn't. So what does any of this have to do with games? It's because I hear the term cinematic thrown at AAA games more often than makes sense. There is a lack of weight to this term similar to the word literally. In most cases, when I hear someone refer to a game as cinematic, they mean a game like Uncharted 2. And to the naked eye, it would seem obvious why. They mean a game that uses cameras, actors, blocking, full facial capture and environments in the way a film typically might. This is a set and you are watching a movie. There are cuts and visual choices made that wouldn't be out of place for an animated film. While this cutscene may be characteristic of a film, what is this? This is the game. This is what the player spends more of their time actually looking at, and we can see quite a few differences between this and the presentation style of the cutscenes. Uncharted is a third-person shooter, so it has a camera that floats above Nathan Drake when he climbs up walls, takes cover, or does anything in the game world. It's focused on action, environments, because that's what the gameplay requires. What it's not doing is cutting. What it's not doing is evoking the feeling of an animated film. What it's not doing is anything that the cutscenes do. Regardless of the idea of control, the player spends their time in the game divided between two distinct visual styles, and the intention of the presentation in gameplay is different to the visual intention of the cutscenes. Because while a film makes visual choices these games can replicate, at no point does a film break from those choices, or an overarching visual style. Neither of these presentation styles is better or worse than the other, they're simply different. Uncharted 2 is attempting to, in place of weave together, juggle simultaneously multiple types of presentation. One is functional and one is artistic. Consequently, we as players separate these two presentation styles totally. This side is a side we're involved in and this one we're obviously not. This segments the story delivery, which is not something that a film does. A cutscene by its nature asks the player to switch how they are engaging with the action and the story and this is not something a film does. To truly capture the qualities characteristic of a film, this separation between what is smooth and what is not can't be so obvious. A gameplay camera handing the player control of the photography is incredibly tricky when dealing with this idea. There's a need to balance the systems of the gameplay and the form of the environment and so many other factors with the photography to make this work. If you have a mechanically simple game like Journey, it's much easier to make the camera meet the artistic intent. But the more complex the gameplay systems are, the more information you'll need to give to the player for them to be able to play the game properly. Uncharted needs to convey quite a lot of information during gameplay, so it needs to sacrifice this cut scene style during these segments for the sake of the mechanics. In other moments, it needs to sacrifice or manipulate the mechanics for the sake of the presentation. So the story dictates how a film looks, but the mechanics dictate how a game looks, which is a pretty significant difference. Keeping in mind the intention of the story or the game, the true beauty in a cinematic style is whether the game uses its cameras and presentation to deliver on its goals seamlessly, if that even is a priority. So Uncharted is trying to appeal to the soul of Indiana Jones, a roller coaster adventure with a resourceful scavenging hero who outruns baddies, escapes danger just in time, uses his wits to solve problems, always full of wise cracks and new solutions. From a character angle and during cutscenes and in some scripted set pieces, the game has it all down pat. These are film sections attempting to establish another film style after all and the player is along for the ride. But in most of the gameplay, not so much. 
This is incredibly restrictive, pretty unremarkable linear gameplay design playing into no sense of urgency or experimentation. It relies on the safe or the trial and error with spectacle and environmental glory the crutch at every turn. These mechanics are lifeless and this camera is still and drawn out, giving no sense of connection to the character that the game could be doing so well. It's not to say that's why the game fails ultimately or even if it does at all, but there are moments when it does feel like Indiana Jones and moments where it really, really doesn't. This is all part of why I don't think of Uncharted or games with similar takes on presentation as cinematic games. I think a cinematic game is when the whole thing has a photographic tone and intention like a film does. A game that, from start to finish, uses presentation to enhance the game's core in the same way a film would. Not every game has to do it, not every game wants to do it, but just because a game can make stylistic choices during some moments and not during others, I don't think that captures any quality of a film. It's mimicking it. Cuphead is a game wholly visually designed in homage to rubber hose animation, and in every different area or moment of the game, menus, maps, gameplay, that visual presentation intention is never broken. Life is Strange is a coming of age story told from the perspective of a photographer. The game's visuals are highly stylized, its cutscenes picturesque, there's a constant refraction of light, a sense of homeliness, the menus are hand drawn, and the people almost look like paper models. What Remains of Edith Finch is a game about a family of doomed people, where the player inhabits the bodies of each family member during their final moments of life, all from the first person perspective, while the story is weaved over the images through text integrated into the environment. Cuphead is a cinematic game, because the use of an overarching presentation style to define the visual project is characteristic of film. Life is Strange is a cinematic game, because the story is about a time-travelling photographer who captures and replays moments in her life. She's learning about moving on from the way things have been, and the presentation style wholly captures the feeling of her artistry, personality, and her obsession with staying stuck in time. Edith Finch is a cinematic game because it's a story about outlook on life and the variety of experiences people can have of it. It's a story about the joy found in living even in the face of death and chooses to bring this message home by having the player stand in the shoes of every person, to see and understand a moment of the world as they do, from their point of view, while hearing about that same character from simultaneous, often poetic narration. These are three examples of truly cinematic games, because there's a start to finish photographic intention to reinforce the core of the game. That's what films do. They use photography to create atmosphere, to reinforce themes, to tell a distinct story through a matched lens. It's not a superficial art. The core qualities characteristic of a film are whatever qualities best tell the story of that film. That's what cinematic means. Because we don't really, on anything but a technical level, analyze or define film photography outside of the context of the film. We don't judge its style or quality based on how successfully it mimics other visual mediums. We analyze what it means, and we judge it based on whether it represents the film coherently and successfully. We can't boil all of that down to a single catch-all term. And until we all collectively decide that a film's visual style is its only quality, we have to think more carefully about where the form's character really comes from, and stop pretending that transplanting its ghost into our games means something more than it does. It's not always film, it might not be that special. I am certain that we can find better ways to analyse game photography without using this meaningless word. Maybe we'll find true mastery in the presentation by looking a little deeper, and help to fuel true progress as well. So if a game is cinematic, it doesn't mean necessarily that it looks like a film. It means it's doing what a film does. There's a difference. <laughs>